Hello xin chào mọi người Chào mừng mọi người đến với kênh channel của mình Bây giờ chúng mình sẽ đến với uh, Đến với bài tiếp theo đó là bài 1004 này Touchy Freely Freely Charlie compares a physical touch about friends and acquaintances in Hong Kong, America and Quan. You've lived in three different parts of the world, so is there any difference between each part in terms mm. of physical contact? Yeah, I have lived in Hong Kong, Guam, and the U.S. Um, Hong Kong is in Asia. Guam is in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. And the U.S. is American culture. So in Hong Kong, I think most people would not touch each other, just give each other a little bow. I find that a bow is very common in Asia. Um, if you're very good friends, you wouldn't really hug. Hugging, I think, is a very American thing to do. I think you would just touch each other on the shoulder or give each other a side embrace, um, a mini hug. In Guam, you would definitely greet your friends and family with a, ch uh, a kiss on the cheek. Um, a handshake is much too formal for island culture because island culture is so relaxed and laid back. You would only do a handshake with business partners or in a really formal setting. But usually a kiss on the cheek is what you receive and give when you see your family and friends. In the US, hugging is most common, I think, for friends and family. But if you're not friends and family, a handshake would probably be the most common. Mm, is the ha are handshakes always the same, or is there different styles of handshake? Hmm, from, from what, what I've, I've observed, observed um, Guam, Guam has American, American culture, culture, so Guam, Guam handshakes, handshakes and US, US handshakes are the same. same. I, I think, think in Hong, Hong Kong, Kong, it's got, got a bit of a British, British background, background, so that's, that's also, also very, very similar. similar. I, I don't, don't see any difference with the handshake. handshake. Hmm. So what about, about young, young people? people? Is there a different way they interact physically with each other? Yes, definitely. Um, in Guam, I always see people do a fist bump uh, for close buddies of theirs. Um, girls would definitely hug and give each other a kiss. Um, in Hong Kong, I don't see the fist bump often. I don't think I've ever seen it at all, actually. Um, but, but for, for close, close friends, friends, I think a side embrace or a semi-embrace would happen, but mostly just some form of touch or acknowledgement of the other person. I think it's also very common for people of the same sex to hold hands in Asia and just be friends. Um, women and women hold each other's hands if they are very, very, very good friends. And uh, it, it's apparently very normal. I don't know about a guy holding another guy's hand, but if a woman and a woman hold each other's hands, it does not signal that they are together as a couple. It might just signal that they are very, very good friends or sisters. In Australia, that would be very strange. Yes, it would, wouldn't it? Even in America and Guam.
Ok, bây giờ chúng mình sẽ đến với phần vocabulary Formal, formal setting Formal setting Formal setting You do a handshake in a formal setting A formal setting is a place that has a formal atmosphere or feeling When something is formal, it is official or highly regarded For example, most business offices have a formal setting The opposite of a formal setting would be a casual setting or a laid-back setting. Notice the following. 1. In a formal setting, you shouldn't speak slang. 2. It's a formal event, so please wear a suit. Okay. Formal setting is a place that has formal almost as no feel Tức là kiểu như là formal setting là một cái nơi mà người ta uh, kiểu có một cái không khí rất là uh, trang trọng lịch sự Side embrace Side embrace Embrace Side embrace You give each other a side embrace To embrace is to hug or for two people to hold each other. A side embrace would be when two people have mainly only one arm around each other. A full embrace would be more like a hug. Notice the following. Number one, the two lovers embraced for a long time. Number two, the two men embraced awkwardly. Oh, uh, side embrace. Um, to embrace is to hug or for two people to hold each other. A side with two people have many, have many only one arms around. À, tức là mọi người kiểu ôm ôm vai nhau. Background. 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 It's got a bit of a British background. Here, the word background means influence or history. For example, if someone has an American background, that means they have been exposed to a lot of American culture. Notice the following. 1. I was born in Nepal but grew up in Toronto, so my background is more Canadian.
it background background uh, uh, ở trong cái bài này nhé thì background nghĩa là influence or history cái ảnh hưởng hoặc là lịch sử ví dụ như là nếu người nào, một người nào đó có cái uh, American background tức là kiểu uh, họ là người họ là người ở đấy đấy có cái bối cảnh ở oh, cái, cái bối cảnh Mỹ thì they have been exposed a lot of American culture uh, là uh, kiểu như là họ sẽ có rất là nhiều những uh, non theo những, những cái văn hóa của nước Mỹ bodies bodies Buddies, close buddies. A buddy is a very close friend, and usually a person that you spend a lot of time with having fun. To call someone your buddy is a way of showing someone you consider them a close friend or someone you care about. Notice the following: one, hey buddy, how you doing? Two, this is my golfing buddy Tim. Buddies, uh, buddies tức là kiểu vẽ rất là rất 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 là thân bạn rất là thân này. First bump. Fist bump. Fist, uh, fist. Fist bump. They gave each other a fist bump. A fist bump is like a handshake. It's a physical contact with the hands used when greeting people. It's a very casual way of greeting friends. You would never use a fist bump in a formal setting. First, uh, fist bump là, uh, giống như kiểu hai cái hai cái nắm tay cũng ở nhau như này giống như là một cách chào hỏi đấy I didn't mean to I didn't mean to This is not a this is not a formal meeting a common way to embrace a friend is with a hug everyone in her family has a background in music maybe i want to introduce to you a buddy of mine it can't get it bumped into you okay và mình sẽ đến với bài tiếp theo và tiếp theo của chúng mình là 1003 là Display of Affection Jerry and Nick discuss showing affection to other people through hugs, kisses and holding hands So Nick, let's talk about touching and holding hands and physical touch uh, with your significant other. Do you and your partner hold hands when you go out in the street? 
Hmm. We hold hands all the time. Initially, we, uh, when we first went out, holding hands was the first thing we did. They have progressively moved on from there to kissing. But holding hands was certainly the first thing we did in our relationship. Do you remember when you first tried to hold her hand, or did she try to hold your hand first? Mm, I made the first move. We were sitting on the couch watching a movie, and I was getting a bit nervous, and I couldn't quite, um, couldn't quite concentrate on the movie. So I moved my hand over to hers, and she reciprocated, and... And moved on from there. So. You know, that's funny that you bring that up because one of the most common moves um, that is made fun of in movies as well is when the guy takes a big yawn, a fake yawn, and he opens his arms wide and places it around the girl's shoulder and thus embraces her. But he had to do it because he yawned. <laughs> in my experience, like my first, um, my first hug was like that as well. So it was just a bit of an excuse to us reaching for something, and then suddenly my hand went around, and she didn't mind. So <laughs> that was very good. Sign. good. <laughs> and what about mm, kissing? Do mm. you kiss a lot in public in the streets? Uh, rarely in public, because we find it makes other people uncomfortable. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. I find that when I see couples kissing or making out in public, I usually think to myself, why don't you get a room? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you don't want to see that. You just want to be having a conversation with them. or yeah, You don't want them to be constantly distracted.
Mình sẽ mình sẽ đến với phần vocabulary. Mình sẽ đây mình có từ went on này. Go à uh, went out, go out. Went out. Went out. When we first went out. Here, the phrase went out means dating, not moving to a particular place. When two people are going out, that means they are a couple and dating each other. Notice the following. 1. How long have you two been going out? 2. We've gone out for two months now. Uh, the phrase when out means dating. Oh, when out tức là kiểu như là hẹn hò Cuộc hẹn. Oh, đúng rồi. Reciprocated. 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 She reciprocated. When you reciprocate something, that means you do something in return for something someone did for you. For example, if someone gives you a gift, you can reciprocate by giving them a gift back. Here are some samples. 1. In Asia, if someone bows to you, you should reciprocate and bow back. 2. She cooked me dinner last week, so I reciprocated by buying her lunch. reciprocated uh, that means you do something in return for something uh, tức là kiểu bạn làm cái gì đấy để đáp trả lại những cái gì mà người khác đã làm cho bạn oh, bring something up bring something up bring something up that's funny you bring that up when you bring something up That means you mention or talk about something for discussion. Here are some examples. 1. The boss brought up the topic of the recent policy change. 2. I never bring up serious issues at the dinner table. Bring something up that means you mention or talk about something for discussion. Tức là kiểu um, khi mà bạn nhắc đến hoặc là nói về cái gì đấy. Making out. Making out. Making out. I see couples making out in public. When two people make out, that means they kiss for a long time. When people make out, they are often sitting down and only kissing each other and not talking. Making out is something only young people usually do. Notice the following. 1. The two teens were making out in the park. It was embarrassing. 2. Have you made out with your new boyfriend yet?
making out uh oh my god when two people make out that means they kiss for a long time when people make out they are often sitting down and only kissing each other and not talking making out is something only young people usually do no why don't you get a room why don't you get a room? Why don't you get a room? This phrase, why don't you get a room, is used as a joke to let two people or lovers know that their affection is obvious to other people and people feel a little uncomfortable and that they should get a room so they can have some privacy. Why don't you get a room? It's is at a drug. Nó là một câu nói đùa này. I'm from comfortable. You should get a room. Oh my god. So, uh, cái này cái câu này thì nó giống như cái hình minh họa đây nhỉ? Ok, mình sẽ không. <cười> uh, Tens like to. My boyfriend and I started to about a month ago. I give my girlfriend a gift. I give my friend a gift and he and he be sure not to. He's very sensitive about it. Bring gaff. You two need to you should be kissing and then you probably get a room. Started to started to go out, make out. Okay, you got five right out of five. We're gonna move to the next lessons. Uh, our next lessons is uh, the prank, maybe. Ba số chín chín bảy này. The Shirley talks about a prank she did with her brother, brothers. So Shirley, we were talking about childhood memories, uh, and you're from Scotland. There's anything from your childhood that you can tell us? Um, I, I know I've got a really funny story actually. Maybe I was about ten years old or something. And uh, we used to have this, this little kind of shack in the countryside that we were dragged to every weekend and uh, away from civilization, you know, and no running water, no electricity. So we kids had to make our own fun. I've got uh, my brothers, myself, and a couple of cousins. We would always go there at weekends or school holidays or something. And, um, I mean, one of the highlight of our weekends was to go to the Sunday, Sunday school, the Sunday morning church service. And the reason, one of the reasons this was uh, attractive to the kids was because they bribed us to go there by giving us sweets when we got there. <laughs> so it was great. So we always went anyway. It was a church service for about an hour and singing hymns and stuff like that. Anyway, this one Sunday we arrived early, about half an hour early. There was nobody there. The church wasn't open yet. So it was, 
as most people know, it rains a lot in Scotland. So on that rainy day, we all were wearing uh, our cagoules, which is a kind of a rain jacket with a big pocket in the front. And while we were waiting for everybody else to arrive, we started just kind of playing around in the trees. There was a little river nearby. And it was at the time of year when the tadpoles were turning into baby frogs. So we got this crazy idea to collect all these. I mean, I'm talking hundreds of frogs were around. So we all got a big handful of baby frogs, uh, put them in this big pocket of our cagoule, went off into church. So there we are. We're kind of in the middle of the crowd. You know, we weren't at the front or the back, kind of in the middle. And uh, everybody's standing up singing the hymns and really getting into, you know, the church singing and stuff like that. And then we decided that we would uh, get the frogs out. (laughs) So each of us, one at a time, each of us kids, one at a time, kind of crouched down as if we were tying our shoelace and let all these frogs out of our pockets. So these tiny little frogs started jumping all over the church. And uh, there's all these ladies in their Sunday best and started squealing and screaming. And the the minister didn't know what was going on. And he's trying to keep everybody calm. And we're just singing along with the hymn. You know, we are really innocent. And they had no idea because they they didn't didn't see us do it. So they had no idea what happened. And, um, yeah, I mean, we got away with it. We didn't get told off because we didn't get caught. And, uh, yeah, when we, after the church service, you know, we had such a laugh after the church service. And, yeah, that's one of my, my greatest childhood memories, getting up to mischief with my brothers. Okay, is it any fun vocabulary? Sunday school. Eh? Okay, it's Christian January worship on Sunday. Sunday school is a class that. Me say is a word. Chủ nhật, trường học chủ nhật À, Sunday school tức là cái mà lớp học về tôn giáo Vậy sao muốn 
when we bribe someone, we try to make them to do something we want by giving the money a gift. Oh, hối lộ. Gọi là hối lộ. Oh. As most people know, we use phrase and most people know when we give information that we expected people to know already. As most people know là như kiểu như mọi người đã biết đấy, như đa số người đã biết. Sunday best. Cái người thờ cái cái gì kia tô giáo. Những cái người mà theo cái đạo này thì họ sẽ mặc những cái đồ đẹp nhất đến nhà thờ vào ngày chủ nhật. Get away with. Um, oh. Get told of. Get told of mean to be scolded by someone in. Get told of, chắc là kiểu như kiểu là bị mắng hả? Bị mắng, ok. Mình sẽ đến as. Most people know. We saw the boy. Get told of by his mother did you see what i made in sunday school did you get told off a lot when you were a child We try to write on wearing their Sunday best. Okay. Uh, what did you did you get away with? Ok, và mình sẽ đến với bài tiếp theo Bài tiếp theo đó chính là uh, Form life Form life Form life Tom and Monica discussed the of, of life on the farm Bài này mất cái file nghe mà rồi mình sẽ nghe xong bài sau nhé Kiwi Adventure Monica gives some tips on what to do in New Zealand Kiwi Adventure Adventure So Monica, you are from New Zealand? Yes, that's right. So for people going to New Zealand, what would you recommend? What are three or four places that you must see in New Zealand? Oh, okay, three or four places you must see. Well, depends what you're looking for, really. I think a lot of people that come to New Zealand enjoy an outdoor lifestyle. So there's lots of outdoor activities and places you can go to, to enjoy in New Zealand. Um, personally, I find the South Island of New Zealand very scenic in comparison to the North Island. So for me, um, a must do 
is the west coast of the South Island. It's very pretty. The west coast. Yeah. Um, in particular, there's two glaciers, Franz Joseph and Fox glaciers, um, which are very stunning to look at. And you can either have a look at them by foot or you can pay for a helicopter ride that takes you up and um, shows you an aerial view of them. Now, do people ever walk across the glaciers? Um, there are guides that can walk you across. Yeah, I haven't done it personally, but um, it is possible. So what else would you recommend for New Zealand? What other places should people see? Um, I think if you want to see, um, let me think, rural New Zealand, it's quite a nice idea to drive the length of the country and then you can see um, the interesting farming that has taken place, um, in particular in the South Island, the lower part of the South Island, and um, a lot of the North Island as well. Um, there's a lot of sheep in New Zealand, and there's a lot of cattle as well. So I think it is always interesting to go for a drive and to see that firsthand. So you just start up in Auckland in the north and drive all the way down south? Yeah, well, there's many ways you can do it, but um, I recommend one way of doing it is to arrive in Auckland and to um, have an experience of a big city, well, a big city for New Zealand, and then drive down the centre of the North Island and maybe have a uh, farming experience somewhere. Um, there's a lot of farm stay opportunities available for tourists who come to New Zealand. So depending on how you do it, you might want to stay two or three days with a family and experience a farming lifestyle. Um, so that's, yeah, one thing I'd recommend. Um, and another is to um, maybe go to a city like Rotorua, which is uh, really in the centre of the North Island and experience um, Māori culture. Um, there's a Māori village there uh, near the Whakarewarewa forest which hosts um, a lot of tourists and you get to experience Māori waiata which is uh, Māori songs um, and you get to see um, the hot springs in New Zealand and thermal mud pools. Um, so yeah, Rotorua is um, a nice city to go and visit and um, then work your way down to the capital of New Zealand which is Wellington and I think if you want to experience the cafe lifestyle of New Zealand that's a good place to go.
okay, chúng mình sẽ đến với phần vocabulary. A, a must do. Okay, a must do là Ở trong trường hợp này thì must do nghĩa là Như là must do ở đây có nghĩa là một cái địa điểm mà bạn phải thấy hoặc là phải đi đến thăm đấy này Stunning Stunning là kiểu very beautiful Rất là xinh đẹp, rất là đẹp đẽ An area view Area để nói về những cái vật ở trên trời này Area view Area view tức là những cái những cái view mà nhìn từ cái balloon là cái bóng bay hả? Hay cái khinh khí cầu rồi Bỏ qua Cái máy bay hoặc là uh, trực thăng Farm stay There are many places to stay when we travel for example hotel Farm stay is a very useful Farm stay tức là kiểu mọi người mọi người đi du lịch nhưng mọi người ở cái cái nông trại và mọi người sẽ trải nghiệm được cái cái cuộc sống ở đấy giống như ở homestay đấy work your way down work your way down when we travel we usually have a list of places we wish to visit work your way down means to start at the top of the list à như kiểu là khi mà mình đi du lịch thì mình sẽ có một cái list những cái nơi mà mình phải đi xong rồi work your way down tức là bắt đầu từ cái đầu tiên xong rồi xuống dần số 2, số 3, số 4 đó. You look absolutely stunning tonight I recommend that you start in Colombia and then you work your way down Where did you do your Where did you do your Uh, the from the area view the Panama Canal is a it is farm stay the farm stay must do where did you do your must do in Peru oh you are three Right, uh, oh. mình sẽ đổi lại hai cái này. Okay, you got five right out of five, and we gonna move to the next part. Um, a uh, long life, chín chín hai này. Nine hundred and nine thousand ninety two. Monica and Tao discuss the secrets of having a long life. So, Monica, a minute ago we were talking about Tai Chi and about how it helps longevity, helps you live a long life. Um, one time when I was in Bangkok, I met a guy and he was doing Tai Chi and he looked really young, but he said, The secret to his old life, he said the secret to looking young was Tai Chi and cold showers. He took a cold shower every morning. Could oh, you, wow. Could you do that? Ah, uh, no, I don't think I could, actually. Yeah, you know, I actually tried it for a while. I tried it for about a week, and I did feel so energized. And it was easy in Bangkok, so it's really warm. But I, I couldn't keep it up, especially now that I'm in a cold climate. There's no way. 
Yeah, I remember when I was young, my mother used to teach me to um, splash my face with cold water in the morning uh, because she believed that helped wake you up. And I remember as a child not liking that at all because I just found it too cold. So I preferred to splash my face with warm water. So have you heard of any other secrets to having a long life? Um, yeah, I've heard of uh, quite a few different secrets to having a long life. Um, I guess one secret that a lot of different cultural groups seem to share is uh, diet. If you take the Japanese as an example, um, and Japanese people do have um, a long life expectancy in comparison to other people from other countries. Um, I think the Japanese eat a diet that's quite low in fat and reasonably low in salt as well. And I think their fluid intake is quite healthy um, because they drink a lot of green tea, which has antioxidants in it. And they drink a lot of miso soup, which has a lot of vegetables in it and is made from fermented barley. So I think that's very healthy. I've also heard that people in the Mediterranean, they also often have a, a long lifespan in certain regions and maybe the combination of wine, just a little wine, not too much, but wine and olive oil and then a lot of uh, fish, seafood, is also maybe beneficial to a long life. Yeah, that's true. I've heard um, French people, for example, live a long life and that has often been said due to a glass of red wine a day. And um, I know people think differently about alcohol and its effect on the body um, these days. Right. Yeah, because alcohol used to be considered quite a bad thing. Um, and discouraged in all forms, but now people tend to think that a glass a day is actually quite beneficial to, to your health. I've also actually heard that laughter, the people that laugh a lot, tend to live longer. Oh, I, yeah, I've heard that too, actually, because um, laughing releases natural endorphins, and I think that helps you physiologically and also I think psychologically you're happier if you're laughing so yeah I think um, that long life is related to um, how you're feeling and I think um, a lot of it's psychological um, as well as um, physical for example how much you're eating and what types of food you're eating yeah I guess I'm kind of in the same boat but I just don't know if I'd laugh that much <laughs> maybe I'm in trouble <laughs>
okay. Mình sẽ đến với phần vocabulary. Keep it up này. To keep it up means to continue to do something. Keep it up tức là kiểu tiếp tục làm gì đấy này. Splash my face. À, splash tức là kiểu hất nước, hất nước vào mặt đấy. Life ex expectancy. Life talks about how long people live. If you avoid smoking, get a lot of exercise and eat healthy food, your life. Oh, um, uh, kiểu như là tuổi thọ đúng không nhỉ? Đúng rồi, tuổi thọ. Oh, cái này mình không biết đọc. Được, chất lỏng. Fluid intake. Fluid intake. Fermented ballet. Every short and for a period of time. Fermented ballet. Ball. Fermented barley. Lúa mạch lên men. In the same board. À, tự nghĩa là những người mà có cùng cái vấn đề hoặc là cùng hoàn cảnh với nhau này. After hard work, you need to increase your uh, your mình sẽ điền những cái nào dễ cho nhé. Splash. The finger will overweight dramatically decrease his. He was overweight. I said the end. Okay, now the issue in the same board. In the same board. Why is make form? Fermented grapes. My brother and I used to. Splash each other in the pool. This schedule is five for a week, but I don't think I could keep it up. Decree his your fluid intake. Okay. Là mình đã làm đúng cả 6 câu hỏi và bây giờ mình sẽ đến với bài tiếp theo bài tiếp theo của mình là bài số bài số 991 Tai Chi Monica talks about the popular exercise of Tai Chi. Tai Chi. Chắc là đây là, chắc là tên của một bộ môn gì đấy. Tai Chi. Okay. So Monica, you do Tai Chi. Ah, yes, I've just joined the Tai Chi club. What, What made you join the Tai Chi club? Well, I wanted to do something that was a lot different to what I usually do, which is high-impact sports like basketball and tennis. So you wanted to do something that was slower? Yeah, well, I don't usually um, enjoy exercise that is quite slow, um, such as yoga, but I decided to join this club and I'm really enjoying it. So what exactly is Tai Chi? What, what do you do in Tai Chi? Well, there are different types of Tai Chi. Um, there's the original Tai Chi, which involves quite quick, fast movements. 
And then there's a slower form of Tai Chi, uh, which is quite popular in Japan. I think it's called Mr. Young Tai Chi. And that involves very slow, um, pronounced movements. And that's the Tai Chi that I'm doing. Um, how do you feel like after you do Tai Chi? Do you feel tired? Do you feel energetic? Um, after I've done Tai Chi, I feel quite energetic, actually. Um, I don't really feel tired because I haven't had a really hard workout. But I feel that um, my mind is very relaxed and very focused and I'm very um, motivated to do whatever I need to do for the rest of the day. Now, uh, you actually are a tennis coach, so you teach sports. Would you recommend Tai Chi for other athletes? Yeah, I do recommend Tai Chi for other athletes. It's quite difficult to know exactly how you would benefit from Tai Chi and how it can directly relate to a specific sport. But I th I've heard that it works on your energy levels um, and focuses your mind so that everything's in balance. And I think that can help any kind of sport because um, even in a sport like tennis, um, it's important to have balance when you're hitting the ball, when you're um, volleying, when you're getting ready for a smash. It actually involves um, having balance in terms of where your center of gravity is. So yeah, the concepts are similar.
Ok, bây giờ chúng mình sẽ đến với phần vọc khác này à, Là video của chúng mình đến đây là kết thúc rồi Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi video và hẹn gặp mọi người trong video tiếp theo Tạm biệt mọi người